In this episode of Big Boy Pants Golf, we're going to analyze the general feeling from about four or five days ago, how Tiger was going to come in and rally the troops and save the PGA Tour and compare it with the news that is coming out right now and let you, the fans at home, decide, is this going to help the PGA Tour or actually be the nail in the coffin? I've got a video up from the Golf Channel that says, Tiger Woods taking leadership role on PGA Tour amid live golf battle, courtesy of Golf Central, the Golf Channel. We welcome you into our Golf Channel studios. Great to have you with us, Anna Jackson, alongside Jaime Diaz, as the biggest story in the game continues to unfold. I mean, Jaime, this is just another example of how seriously the players are taking this threat uh, of the Live Golf Series. Tiger has made his position very clear at the open of his distaste for Live, uh, to say the least. But the fact that... Let's look into exactly all the things that Tiger has said about Live Golf Tour, and then we'll get a feeling about how Tiger's position has perhaps evolved with the reality that is the Live Golf Tour. I am going to read some of Tiger's quotes at the British Open 2022 press conference. I disagree with it, Wood said, of players' decision to sign with the Saudi-backed league, which has driven a wedge in the men's game by luring top stars with massive guaranteed paydays. I think that what they've done is they've turned their back on what has allowed them to get to this position. The article also states, he, as in Tiger Woods, believes his extraordinary wealth has come only as a byproduct of his encore success, and he views Liv's structure as essentially anti-competitive. It's weird that Tiger believes his extraordinary wealth has come only as a byproduct of his encore success, considering he signed with Nike and Titleist right out of college after two years at Stanford. He was already a rich dude right off the bat, age 20, pre all this obviously incredible success he had on the golf course. Tiger, you also had tons of money at age 20. You still went on to be arguably the best ever. You didn't pull a Michelle Wee. Also, for the record, as soon as Henrik Stenson signs, with Live Golf Tour, he wins his first tournament on the Live Golf Tour. Tons of money, still incentivized to get out there and win. I bet that when Jay Monahan first heard that Tiger Woods was taking time out of his day to fly up to Wilmington, Delaware to meet with a bunch of top PGA Tour professionals and Ricky Fowler because Ricky Fowler apparently also drove up with Tiger. Jay Monahan was probably like, my prayers have been answered, Tiger's gonna save the PGA Tour. But one of the proposals that came out is that Tiger is going to have 18 no-cut tournaments between the top 60 players battling for 20 million purses, thereby really backtracking on all the negative points that were ascribed to the Live Golf Tour for the past few months. Again, no cuts, only the top 60 players, and they're gonna do 18 tournaments versus the Live Tours 14. $20 million purses versus the Live Tours $25 million purses. Yes, a tiny bit different, but in terms of any principles or fundamentals, exactly the same. Tiger. This isn't the traditional PGA Tour format. Isn't only having 60 players versus the typical fields of 140, 150, 160 players with a cut, anti-competitive? And specifically, what about Ricky Fowler? The reason I bring him up is if Tiger is pitching this 60-man field, is it going to be the 60 top players as per the official world golf rankings or is this top 60 going to have some space available for the brand names the superstars like ricky who's now unfortunately 173 in the world the more you start picking out names like ricky fowler who are well outside the top 150 in the world but are big names the more you're going to be accused of being like live and having all these washed up players <music>
now another big key issue is the fact that since you're so similar to the Live Golf Tour, how do you get official World Golf ranking points? Paul Regali points out 18 events, limited field, no cut, 20 million purse per event. And I'm sure the boys will think OWGR points should be easily included for these. This is some first class hypocrisy at its best. Laughing emoji, laughing emoji, laughing emoji. Where's Waldo? Tiger also notes, we used to have 36 playoffs for major championships. That's how it used to be. 18 hole US Open playoffs. Obviously things like that have changed. They've repeatedly changed the playoff formats for the majors. British Open at one point was four holes. Four holes? Didn't the RNA switch to a three hole playoff a couple of years ago? If you're asking that question, you're a pretty keen playoff observer. The point of this article is that it's pretty random. Just because holes numbers 1, 2, 17, and 18 form a natural loop, there you have it. That's the reason why now it's back to a four hole playoff. Point being, things change. Here's the next evolution in the whole process of change. Now, we all remember that Greg Norman was not invited to the British Open, and Tiger states, the RNA obviously have their opinions and their rulings and their decision. Greg has done some things that I don't think is in the best interest of our game, and we're coming back to probably the most historic and traditional place in our sport. I believe it's the right thing. Also, Tiger, six weeks later. So six weeks ago, Tiger's complaining in a Golf Digest article that about Live Golf Tour events. They're playing blaring music and have all these atmospheres that are different. And then he and Rory come up with this brilliant idea to do some kind of stadium golf. And let me guess, they're gonna have some blaring music because that's what you have at stadiums. Here is the most significant figure in golf right now in terms of the leadership that he's providing as an example of what great players have done through the years. You know, he doesn't want to see live golf or anything like live golf supplant he doesn't want to see Live Golf or anything like Live Golf supplant. This isn't aging well, and it's been under a week. Considered to be the highest level of competitive golf. That's very sacred to him. Not on his watch, so to speak, you know. What do you think Tiger and Rory's walkout music is going to be when they're playing stadium golf? He's won all these tournaments at 72 holes. That is the test. That's the pressure. Yes, he won that 72 holes when they were full fields with a cut. What he's proposing is a lot different than that. That's the hard part. That's the reason it's such a great achievement. You know, he so now we're gonna focus on the fact that it's 72 holes because with the somewhat bombshell information that's coming out, that may be the last differentiation point between the PGA Tour and the Live Golf Tour. Wasn't considered the greatest athlete in the world by other athletes who were in that same category for nothing. It was because he could handle those moments, that pressure moment. And that is what to him is great about championship golf and what he wants to make sure continues on. Tiger wants to make sure that it's still 72 holes. Does he still want to make sure it's 140 people, 150 people, 160 people fields? No, or probably not. And that shows a huge difference between the levels of PGA Tour players and how they basically fight for their stratosphere. The superstars, let's say 1 to 50, have different needs than 75 to 150. This is often repeated, and it just shows you that different golfers have different goals, and we shouldn't be looking down on the Live Tour players because for them, the opportunities of Live suited their particular needs. Being corrupted in any way. Uh, you know, he, he definitely uh, feels like he said this before, I think, at the Hall of Fame speech, to some extent, you know, you earn it in golf. It's all there for you to deal with the hardest part of it and come through the other end. And, and he also spoke very similarly at the Open Championship when he said, you know, I just don't understand how these guys who have so much ability and have been dreaming about this don't want to keep playing. I'm looking forward to Tiger and Rory pitching stadium golf as the new dream. At the highest level 
among the greatest competitors. That's something that shouldn't be lost in the game. So I just think this is his legacy. He wants to leave something. He wants to be on the right side of history. I'm praying that the PGA Tour has this new idea of 60-man fields, no cuts, 20 million purses, so that all of us live fans can just sit back and laugh and <laughs> laugh and laugh. <laughs> Will Tiger be on the right side of history? Will the PGA Tour be continuing its standard day in and day out, PB and J and milk, Nabisco vanilla crackers, four days of golf, and then you have a cut, and then you have the remaining players battle it out on the weekend. Is it gonna be the same farmer's breakfast menu every weekend let's make a mark here beyond his playing career and you know his son plays and that's important to him he wants him to have that kind of you know system to play in as opposed to something that not so sure about that could considers to be much less yeah i mean there's arguably not no more of a more powerful voice in the game than tiger Woods. he mentioned he feels like players who have joined left have sort of turned their back on what has allowed them to get into this position i mean trip you know what it takes to get out there on the pga tour as we welcome in trip eisenhower the third member of our team first of all just to get your thoughts on the fact that tiger has made the effort and he is making it this battle to fight and getting out there and talking about it with the players well again i i think it's it's what it means to Tiger Woods. And, and it's, uh, you know, it was always a, a, a Tiger and Phil kind of battle and Tiger always won those battles. And it Trip has this whole little Phil and Tiger speech prepared, completely off point. Let's go to what's just going down right now. Again, this is from a few days ago, four or five days ago. This is what everyone's theorizing. And now reality is entering the picture. Let's go to the Rich Eisen show with its very biased narrative and its very shady call-in guy, Alan Shipnuck, and let's see what he thinks. Um, it's interesting, I've been talking to different people in the game, and it sounds like not every player in the field has been invited to this meeting. It's more. Boom. Here's the first indicator that it isn't really just about the PGA Tour in general, and it's more about a select group of players within the PGA Tour that are looking to create their own little bubble of better opportunity. If there's any chance for a larger compromise, which of course is the third part of that tweet, that uh, Monaghan might have to be a sacrificial lamb in all of this, because when you villainize the other side, it becomes very difficult to negotiate with them. I'm betting that Jay Monaghan is definitely out before next British Open. He's got to go. That's the initial way I thought this meeting would have gone in terms of getting rid of Jay Monaghan and trying to see how the Live Golf Tour and the PGA Tour can work together. Apparently though, it's not going that way. And what Tiger's really doing, it seems, is creating Live Golf Part 2, but within the PGA Tour. What's great about this particular moment in golf is that we can speculate. We got a little bit of info. Now let's put our ideas down in the comment section. What do you think is going to happen? And while you're thinking about what's going to happen next for the PGA Tour and which of Tiger's ideas in this little clandestine meeting are going to actually come to fruition, including this very odd stadium golf idea, why don't you slam that subscribe button too? Peace.